All right, welcome back everybody. Final session of the day. Have you made it this far? I hope so. Great. Yeah, see everybody, there's Daphne. All right, and there's Anzar. We're now connected on LinkedIn, Jackie. Who else is in there? Gloria's here, excellent. All right, Dan Smith, Morel is back. And Sylvia Cherry, oh, good to see you. Thank you so much for, for being here. And um, let's see, I guess maybe you are as big a fan of Chris Paxton McMillan as I am, but Chris has regularly contributed to TLDC, uh, TLDC events, like you were just in the accessibility event and you've done lots more for us. And it's always fun having conversations with, with Chris. And you know, honestly, I don't even have a bio for you in front of me. I just like know you and I didn't even think about it. So um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but you'd be, you're be you going to be talking about we're off to see the AI wizard with mm -hmm. ELB Learning's Lectora, Lectora and um, Scenario VR. And so with that, um, Chris, please take it away and welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Daphne saying, yep, couldn't miss this one. I'm going to go ahead and hide Thank myself you. from the screen yeah, and let you take over. Share screen here. Uh, let's see, entire screen. Okay, let's see if it's going. Okay, I want to start off by saying this is a sponsored session uh, from ELB Learning, who is one of the sponsors of this conference. I am not an ELB Learning employee, uh, but I've just been using their projects uh, or products primarily Lectora since 2004. So I'm not getting paid for this. I just really like it and I love AI uh, and supporting TLDC. Anyway, um, I guess I should say hello. Uh, so hello, friends. My name is Chris Paxton McMillan with D3 Training Solutions, where we design, develop, and deliver training, 3Ds. Uh, I am a white female in my mid-50s. I wear glasses, have graying blonde hair, and my pronouns are she and her. And as Ms. Cannon mentioned in this morning session, and I love it, I too have been in the ID field since the 1900s or BG before Google. So I love that and I wanna start using that a lot. Um, but I wanna thank you all for joining me as we venture off to see the AI wizard with ELB Learning uh, and Lectora and Scenario VR. So there's me, but let me move on. Um, Today I'm going to talk again about Lectora and the new AI course wizard. Then we'll talk and show, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the integrated chat GPT, uh, very much like what Ms. Gupta, if I'm saying it correctly, um, presented earlier because you can do the same uh, action Lectora and I believe you can in Captivate also. Um, but I don't have that part of the presentation, so I'm going to reference you elsewhere. And then we'll look at scenario VR and AI. So um, when we think about this, and I kind of want a show of hands maybe, or hearts, or whatever you want, um, when before we got started or before this conference started, I feel like many people out there, again, before the conference, the whole thought of AI would send chills down your spine thinking it was going to replace us all as developers. Did anyone feel that way? Or are these all really good first adopters? Okay, I'm getting some yeses. Okay, exactly. And I hope, and I just want to say what everybody, all the other presenters have said, is that it really should be, <laughs> yay! Although, yay, hopefully you don't now. Uh, but this really should be looked at just additional tools in our toolkit. We use AI all the time, and these are things you may not really have even thought about, from using text-to-speech from Amazon Polly, um, Murph, Well Said Labs, Grammarly, Spellcheck. Uh, I was actually using um, not otter.ai, but rev.com. Earlier today, I mean, that is all AI. And even when you open your phone with your face or your finger or your smart home devices, Google search, all of that is using AI. So uh, it's really just a tool. Now, great question came in. Uh, can you provide a list of tools you use and for what? Um, I don't have one handy, but I'm actually working on one and I can get one out and um, I will get a summary out and we'll post it either and I'll tag this, um, the TLDC or something. So great question. Because uh, I use a lot, my background, not only am I an instructional developer, again, being in this field forever, but I started out as a teacher. 
Um, I taught journalism, English, and uh, government, uh, basically uh, seventh, seventh grade, but I preferred higher up. Uh, I'm now still a college and I'm an adjunct professor. So some of my stuff is geared more towards that education side too, but they can all be used interchangeably. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't really realize my educator sides and my ID sides. So, um, so really, you know, this is all just a tool. So again, this picture is here because I, I'm a bookaholic, obviously, uh, but depending on how old you are, and I'm really going to age myself now, when I think back to writing papers, I would head to the library and I would look things up in a card catalog. And I loved, it's one of the things I still love to this day, is the smell of one of those older libraries um, or an ice rink, either one. Uh, but that was, for many of us, our first step in researching a topic. But with today's technology of computers, the internet, we don't have to go to the library and look through card catalogs. So we actually can use AI to do this. And I think, yeah, that's the last slide. So I'm going to close that. Whoops, minimize, there it goes. Is it showing? Yes. OK, perfect. So I'm going to go out here to Lictor Online and launch it. This will launch, some of this stuff works a little faster or slower depending on your internet connection. If you have attended any of my sessions, um, often we have little glitches because I live out in the boonies uh, in Oklahoma. So, but I'm going to come over here to create new project. And so basically, they're using, what we've done here is we're using AI really to get our course started. For those longtime Lectora users, the term wizard may be back may bring back some fond memories of previous lector wizards like the background wizard, the button wizard, design, title, certificate. Um, I think there may have been a few others. But those are all things that, again, it's not called wizard anymore, but we still use those on a daily basis. So, and hopefully I think the AI wizard will be the same way. So let's go over here. We can see we've got other ways to start, but this first one here is new, the AI course wizard. So I'm gonna select that. And now I'm gonna get some help from you all. What topic should we create? And, and think this is primarily because it's using um, ChatGPT 2.5, I believe. And so it really needs to be that kind of generic stuff, harassment free. Uh, I did one on how to tie a tie, how to potty train a dog. So what are your topics? What would we like to develop a course on? And y'all can type that in. It gives me a chance to take my drink. No responses. Okay, well, um, oh, would it have to have info on AI topics? Nope, it can be anything. How to change car oil. That's good. AI ethics, how to patch a dry all. Oh, AI ethics, I can talk about that. I'm actually prepping for um, my college students. They all keep being shocked. I was like, okay, we're going to learn about AI and how to use AI and legally what you can and can't. And, you know, because you don't want to get kicked out of school. And they're all like shocked that, oh my gosh, a teacher is actually saying we can use AI in our class. So, um, Okay. Oh, gosh, there's some really good things here. So we've got how to change car oil, how to patch a drywall, how to make an apple pie. You're going to make me hungry. Uh, how to cook pasta. Uh, the effects of social media on the teenage brain. Oh, that's a good one, too. Uh, I'm not sure how much would be out there. I'm going to do, let's see, let's do how to make an apple pie because that is my favorite pie. So how to make an apple pie. Now, you'll notice as soon as I type that in, I get a pop-up message that says you don't have to do complete sentences because it, you know, it doesn't need complete sentences. And we can see there's some topic examples there. And it's going to say, well, how many pages do you want to generate? Because really what it's doing is that research for us, just that kind of content research when we'd be at the library. We can go down on our pages down to like one, or we can go up to 15. The default, there. Uh, the default is 10. I'm going to do 12 because that's a good number. By default, it also gives us a project theme. I can change that if I want. And there are, I think, 13 different themes, each with different colors, some with navigation, some without navigation. I'm going to scroll down. I don't know. Let's do. No, which do I want to do? 
I think I want to do morning. Yeah, let's do that green one because it's not very sunny outside and I'm I'm missing the summer and not the heat. So I'll say I'll use that theme and now I'll hit generate. Now, as it's performing its magic, it should take about 60 seconds, but again, my internet connection isn't that great. But as it's doing so, it kind of makes me laugh because it gives us little quips. So I asked AI to tell a joke about itself. It said, why did AI cross the road to get to the other cache? Very much bad dad jokes, which I think are hilarious. It also gives us this fun little activity that, or image thing. I don't know, but my ADD side could just stare at that part all day. So, and yeah, we can see it is searching. La la la. It may not have liked my search. It should though. Okay. There it goes. Again, it's all about my network connection. <laughs> And we're doing better. We, we've switched from, um, I won't get into Elon Musk and his thoughts, but man, he has taken us where we can actually uh, stream, you know, which I hadn't been able to do. So we can see, I now get this course. It's 12 pages. I have an introduction. Uh, I have ingredients, how to prepare steps. I've got my steps, prepare the pie crust, prepare apple filling, Roll out the pie crust, fill the pie crust, add the top crust, bake, serve, and enjoy. Yeah, I've got bacon there. Okay. Serve and enjoy. Tips and variations, a conclusion, QA, and, of course, some references. So this is kind of cool. It evidently got the stuff from Food Network, all recipes, and simply recipes. So from here, there's several things. And people are like, oh, my gosh, this is going to replace us as developers. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. There is still plenty of us to do. For one thing, we need to through and make sure this information is accurate because it comes from the Internet. And in case you haven't heard, the Internet is not 100% accurate. And hopefully I get some good laughs and, and stuff on that one because some people are still surprised. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not like if you find it in the newspaper. Um, you know, it's going to be true about Santa or whatever. So yes, has Jeremy says, we got to be careful because they can not only be wrong, but they can be very confident about it. And so you're going to want to go through first and check the content, make sure it is accurate. I would also go through and double check because sometimes it doesn't sound that human. So you may want to put it in your own voice, okay, and tweak it a little bit in that sense. We also want to reformat because this to me looks horrible. So I'd probably want to do some things on here and make it steps and, and put in some spacing in between here. And just my husband hates it. I say this all the time, but just jazz it up a little bit and take it up to that next level. Um, so someone, yeah, definitely saves a lot of times just putting the words on the page. Exactly. You could kind of do well. No, I was like, if you already had in a PowerPoint, you could have brought in a PowerPoint and that would have done it, but you still had to put it into the PowerPoint. So I'm going to need to go through and do this. I'm also probably going to need to add some specific text information that applies specifically to your group or organization. For myself, I normally for an introduction page, I usually kind of like it to be a book cover or like the start of a movie to where there's really not a lot of content. It would just say something like how to make an apple pie and have a picture of this delicious apple pie and it would say click to begin type of thing. So you'd want to add that. Uh, you're going to want to add maybe the objectives, uh, a test, some knowledge checks. And again, of course, reformat all of this with either your own custom interactions or there's all kinds of interactions. Where is stock assets? There it is. Mm, oops, not the, well, nope, not those stock assets. Sorry. Tools, template library. That's what I was looking for. Um, so I could pull up, again, some of these wireframe or some different interactions in there, again, just to kind of take it to that next level. Uh, so reformatting, putting all that stuff. So not having, as a developer, let me close this. Not having to do as much research on some of that really basic stuff or the historical stuff will really speed up that course development so I can, again, meet my deadlines easier and, again, maximize my output. Um, 
you'll you'll be able hopefully to get some of those never ending basic topics out of the way this way and be able to focus your organization focus on your organization specific content stuff again hopefully ai or probably ai really couldn't help you with due to proprietary issues uh, and it's just may not even be on there now um have people ask is this included yes this just kind of comes automatically with it it is not a la carte. So the other thing is I prefer to use Lectora Desktop. This is not in Lectora Desktop because you have to ensure you have an internet connection and Lectora Desktop doesn't. So what I could do if I wanted to do this is I could of course export it. And again, depending on your connection, depends on how long it takes. And it would export the file into what is referred to as a PKG file. And then I could open up in my Lictor desktop, which is my preference on how to use just because, oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's okay because it's waiting. So I'm gonna go ahead and say exit. Um, and that's again due to my timing. Oh man, as did I mention my internet connection? Yeah, this is a perfect example. So uh, you can again work because if it's raining, sometimes I lose my internet connection and I can't not work just because it rains. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I want to show you a video link and I'll put this in the chat. Uh, if you wanna see, I did a presentation with Mr. Kumar uh, and he showed how to integrate ChatGPT with Lectora, very much like what we saw earlier today with Storyline. And you should be able to do that with Lectora, Captivate, um, Storyline, any of those. But he actually walks through it. I haven't done it yet, so I wasn't quite comfortable uh, in doing it. Uh, but basically, he shows a scenario-based interaction where, just like what we saw earlier, they put the text option in. Um, I think it was a sales option, and you were supposed to decide, you know, um, how do you respond to the salesperson to call people back? Or, like, I think I put on there that I would just ignore them. And um, I didn't say kick them, like the example earlier, which I thought was hilarious. But the AI recognized, no, that's not an appropriate response. What you should do is, and that's just amazing. Um, so that link, and it, his portion starts at about 20 minutes in. You want to watch that portion of it. Okay, questions or anything so far? I'm doing okay? I know it's late in the day. Well, depending on where you're calling, listening from. Okay, then let's go ahead then, and I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and I'm gonna go back to the studio, and now I'm gonna go into Scenario VR. And Scenario VR I've used, we can see I've got several um, programs in here that I've built or am building or am testing or different things, um, but it is great. It is a great immersive experience, um, but it starts with having a great scene, and that can be a bit challenging. If you don't have access to a 360 camera, and the ones I take aren't even film cameras, they're just still cameras, or you don't have time to go out and shoot footage, or, and this is what I really like to use this next tool for, let's say I want to put a proposal together. I need a pitch to say, here, we need to create a virtual reality, and I hate to say this, active shooting drill, or we need to create something else. I can go through and instead of going or wherever and actually do the filming, trying to make sure, okay, when can I film where no one's there? And if they are there, how do I get them to sign the release notes if I don't know who they are? And I mean, it's just a lot. How do I do it? Well, I can use Sonara VR and their AI tool to create an image. Well, you may be thinking you can do that. There's all kinds of tools. We've seen a lot that let us create images. But this is really cool. But this not only um, allows an image, it's a 360 degree image. So you don't have to go out and shoot it yourself. And you can also create it in any environment. And this is where I get into trouble because I sometimes just get in here and play. And if I'm not billing hours, then I'm not getting paid. So. Um, yeah, playing isn't always what I need to be doing. So I would go over here and I would say create scenario. And it's going to say, okay, great. 
what kind of scenario do you want? And if I had a scenario in there, I could use it or I could choose the AI wizard. Now, let me go back. Um, those were more how to's. How about a um, something you might, if anyone wants to text in, something you might do for a location? So some of the ones I've done is a, um, you know, dogs and cats playing uh, or a doggy daycare. Um, I've done uh, an office building that was, um, had flooding in it. So any ideas for a place? I'll let you type it in. And while you're thinking that, you can also, what kind of, okay, coffee shop, that's a good one. And this is where I start playing probably a little too much. You can go in here and figure out what type of place. So do you want a digital painting? Do you want an epic digital painting? Radiant, enchanted. Let's do, actually, let's just do a couple of these. So I'm going to do the coffee shop. That's pretty standard. We know. I'm going to leave it at realistic and I'll generate. And again, depending on your internet connection, it depends on how long it takes. And I will say what I'm doing for one right now is I'm using real images, but then I'm using the cutout people from the ELB library to bring them in because I didn't want to put use uh, actual people or the client really didn't, at least yet. Okay, and I'll populate here in one second. Or at least it did earlier. There it goes. Okay, so now we have a realistic looking coffee shop. 360, up, down, all the way around image. Okay, let's change that. I'm going to say cancel. And let's say a coffee shop. And this, like I said, this is where I probably spent way too much time. In um, let's do sci-fi. I have to admit, I'm a big sci-fi nerd. And I'm okay with that. Growing up, high school, eh. But uh, now, yeah, I'm okay. So what kind of sci-fi coffee shop are we going to give? And to me, I've used this because I have a client that's like, oh, I don't know how I would, you know, because they're very strict and straight. And I was like, you know, we could do this. You want to do an activity where they're playing a game. We could do this kind of where that's where this comes in. When they score more, they get more coffee or they go places or something. So, okay. Okay. I've got a couple plant. Do I only have the one planet? Oh no, there's more. I was like, come on, give me more planets. Okay. So we now get an idea of a coffee shop elsewhere. I'm not sure how they're going to drink with their helmets on. But, you know, um, I'm sure by then we will have it figured out. So if I wanted to use this, I go ahead and say, okay, create. And now I have my coffee shop again that I can go through. Um, yeah, I don't see how they would be drinking anything. But, uh, and how's that not float? But anyway, that's okay. I'm, I'm asking too many questions. So we now have that uh, 360 image so I could use this and play with it. And if I wanted to put a demo together for my boss as to how we could use it without going out and creating a coffee shop, something I have it. So um, that, uh, I wanted to show that. The last thing I just want to mention in case why people ask asking questions, is they do have a third tool called Rehearsal. I don't know much about it, though, because I'm a small uh, one-person shop. And with Rehearsal, though, it is great if you've got salespeople. And with it, it incorporates AI. Uh, it has automatic keyword recognition. It counts the pace and word count. So if you've, uh, for sales pitches, if you said, you know, your elevator pitch has to be one minute, I mean, it lets them practice and it watches the video and they can see themselves and it gives them tips and improvements and, and different things. So I think that's kind of cool. 
I just don't know much about it. So, but with all of these, um, you'll see enhancements to these features in future releases. I know they mentioned with Lectora uh, for Im importing the chat GPT, they'll actually have voice recognition. They're working on that here soon. So you could work on that. Um, but that is really it for this portion. Questions, comments, thoughts? Do you want me to try something else? Love the snare. It is, the snare of VR is really cool. Oh, yeah, I get in, that's the other day, I was just, if I'm gonna do this, let me actually play more than what I normally build. And it was like getting those different locations um, because, well, actually, let's go back a second. Hang on. Let's go here and let's look at another one because the dream, the dream one's really cool, I think. Uh, coffee shop. Um, let's do, uh, do I want dream or, I mean, you can see how many of these these are. Holograph, advanced. Um, I don't even know what some of this stuff means. It's way over my head. Uh, let's do, let's do the cartoon. I like cartoons. Can you edit the photos? The blah, let's try that again. Can you edit the photos that are produced at hotspots? Oh, yeah, definitely. And you're not actually editing the photos in this case. You would, I mean, you could take, I'm trying to think how you, you could probably download the images if you wanted to actually edit them, but to add hotspots, you would actually just add them on top. And I can show you how to do that. That's, that I know how to do. Um, let's see if it gives us a cartoon. Yeah, I do that a lot with the hotspots uh, or different things. Yeah. My internet gets worse and worse in the evenings and afternoons. Oh, okay, I like that, that's kind of cute. So let me go ahead and use that and I'll say create. Again, we can see it's a 360 JPEG. If I wanted to add a hotspot saying that they had to uh, find the, let me find something that would be interesting here. Um, We'll say that's a Shefalera. I have no idea what kind of plant it really is. So I would just go over here, add hotspot. Uh, I'm going to call it plant. Um, let's see, transparent, done. We can see here it's added, and I would just pop it over here. And then if they click on that, like for the one I did that's a tornado evacuation, they click on it and it takes them to, they slowly got to click on all the places that eventually gets them down to safety. So, and if they click the wrong areas, like the library, it's like, oh, well, this is a great library. you got lots of books, blah, 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 but this isn't safe. So, and I really like using um, scenarios and pathways. I think it really helps with the learning. Awesome. Other questions or comments? Well, that is it for me. Short, sweet, hopefully to the point. Uh, I don't see any questions in the QA. All these new tools make me consider going back to just developing e-learning. It, yeah, I... Part of me sometimes goes back to just e-learning, but then it's like, oh, I like the ID part too, which is again, kind of why I own my own business and company now, because I can pick and choose kind of depending on my mood. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chris, what kind of, what kind of, what AI tools do you use the most nowadays? Um, it depends on what I'm doing. Um, of course I use ChatGPT a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to go, and I'm in the process of, hang on, let's go D3. I actually have, I've used, uh, well, there's your chat GPT AI tools. Um, I use this one. I don't know how many people have used this. Hang on, leave. Okay, it's called Learn AI. And it's specifically geared, again, towards learning and training tools. So um, um, I've used that a few times. I like it. Um, it 
only has a free trial. So I've gone through the free trial and it was great. Um, haven't figured out if I'm going to, right now I'm still in the, what do I get for free stage? What does it do? Uh, in my using. Uh, it will actually go through and help you, uh, you enter your prompt and it basically helps you come up with um, the stuff for your course. So it can give you the assessment criterias, audio videos, things, case studies, things like that. So it's more for my the college level portion of it. Um, but it's here, I guess I'll scroll up a little more there. So it's really cool if I'm wanting, you know, um, to, again, build a full curriculum. I primarily teach business and ethics and things like that at the college level. And it's really cool for doing that with anything. Um, I know the co comment on ethics has come up a lot. Right now, I think, has a developer. We have to reveal when. So I to create something. They needed an image with a dog. Um, well, and we wanted it to be wearing, kind of just to go with it, I wanted it to be in a backpack wearing boots. Well, we were able to get some other images because my dog is great. I could get my dog in my car. I could get my dog doing some other things. My dog was not going to stand for me putting a backpack on him and putting him in my husband's boots and then looking like he was reading a map. He, yeah. So used AI to create an image, actually used AI from Canva Pro. In that case, I use actually Canva Pro quite a bit for my AI um, and created the image. And I had to let my client know. It was like between this one and the cat that's laying on the couch, you know, surfing the Internet with a bowl of popcorn. You know, those are AI generated. You know, I have mm -hmm. to let you know that. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, no, it's great. Um, so and, and I tell my students in my college classes, I have no problem if they use it as a tool. Yeah. But to take it and then act like it is yours and you haven't tweaked it and reviewed it and done all these other things, that's where, again, ethically, uh, besides it, you can't you can't charge, really, I'm sure this is going to come up, but with intellectual property, I couldn't claim intellectual property. My client would have no protections in intellectual property if it, 100%, if it came from AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, what are you seeing as far as your students using AI? What, what, what's been your experience lately? Um, <laughs> they actually, uh, I, last week I had a student, they were supposed to watch this video and they were supposed to tell us their thoughts, what they thought of the video. And it was a video, it was on YouTube. And I think they just plugged in the description and then their question because I had three students with the exact same answer. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to give this a zero on this. I want you to redo it. I love that you're using AI, but here's how we do it. So uh, actually Monday is, I told him, I was like, you know, I, we're going to talk about AI and how and the best ways to use it. So exactly a big teaching moment because they could lose their scholarships. Um, in Tulsa, we have a program called Tulsa Achieves. And if they went to high school in Tulsa County, they can get their freshman, sophomore year of college free. Uh, at our community college. And so a lot of students take advantage of that. And there's no financial requirement um, for the parents. So any of them can do it. You just have to be in Tulsa County. And so a lot of them do. And I'm like, you know, the last thing you want to do is basically be caught plagiarizing because that's kind of what you would do, uh, be considered. So, you know. Wow. How about within the faculty that you work with? Uh, are there any discussions about AI? I was actually at a meeting uh, through the state of Oklahoma, higher ed. Um, was it Wednesday or Thursday? No, today's Thursday. So it had to be Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't even remember what day about it. And yeah, there's a lot of discussion. Um, but the big thing is trying to kind of even in our field, educate people that it's a tool. I mean, because if you tell your students they can't use it, guess what they're going to? Mm -hmm. If you try to put in these checkers to say, oh, my gosh, I'm checking to make sure you're not doing this, they're going to. And, and the whole point, I think, of education is we've got to prepare people for the future. And so instead of saying you can't do this, let's say here's the best way to. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Anybody have any more questions? anything at all on um just elb learning and lectora and scenario vr 
Not seeing anything on there. Are there are there trial versions available for like say Lectora and oh, stuff? Completely, yes. Um Christy should have been here for that. They do have a table, so they can help you out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, ELB, I think learning.com. Um, products, authoring tools. And I will say if anyone uses it, if you'll have questions on it, let me know. I yeah. will, um, I, I have a book that I wrote uh, with Diane Elkins uh, on Lectora. Um, I'm actually creating some videos right now for YouTube. Um, and, you know, not a sales pitch or anything. I just, I, you know, I could talk about e-learning and develop instructional development and all this stuff all the time. So, but yeah, if you go out to create learning lecture, I think this is the right site. Um, well, that's request demo. <laughs> okay. Uh, free trial. Oh, so down go. here at the very bottom, actually, let me just put the blank in the, uh, the link to that part in. Nice. On oh, its 30 days. That's good. And it's not like Lectora is, you know, a new player on the scene. Lectora has been around forever. Um, it was actually the very first rapid uh, development tool out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Was it called something different before? Um, no, but it, the company name was different. It was Trevantis. Right, and Trivantis. that's what it, a lot of people refer to it as Trivantis. So, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, well, okay. I think um, we had a nice long day today, Chris. Uh, and I really appreciate you closing out the day for us. And everybody, those of you that have been around for, for all six sessions today, congratulations. You are now experts in AI and LD. <laughs> So, but we have tomorrow as well to, um, to go through and tomorrow's excellent. I mean, we have Christy Tucker coming in, oh, Nick Floro, fantastic. let's see who else, um, we're opening it up with, um, Melissa Coakley and her partner who built some stuff out. Here. There's a, it's a great schedule go. tomorrow. Um, let's see. There I can't go. even remember so much going I've on. I've got it on the screen, I think. Oh, there you so, go. Yeah. Yeah, Clea Mahoney with Chatty G and me. I'm yeah. interested in seeing that one. So tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a great way to end your week, and you're just going to learn so much more. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out the session. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks, Chris. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.